Well, good morning, Safe House. It's good to have you guys join me again this Sunday morning. I really appreciate you guys tuning in with me so we can get back together studying God's Word. So we are going to get back together in person soon, so just keep tuning in each week until I can give you that definitive deadline and time frame, because you know how things change from time to time. But anyway, what I'd like to do before we go any farther is open up with a word of prayer. So if, you, if you're with me, like we do in Safe House, put your hands up, just like this. Good. Fingers together. Make sure mom and dad and everybody's doing it. Bring it down to the laps. All right, good. Bow your head, close your eyes, and don't distract your brother and sister. Here we go. Father, we thank you so very much for the day that you've given to us. We thank you for the beautiful weather outside, Lord, even though it might be raining or sun shining, Lord, we're very grateful for what you give us. We pray that you would bless this time together, that you would help us, Lord, to really seek out your word and apply it to our hearts so that we can better serve you every day. And Jesus, if there's anybody at home right now sitting on their couch or wherever they're at, and they've never accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, I pray, Father, that you would have them do that today. And if they're not sure how to do that, Lord, that they'll reach out to us and we can show them through God's Word how they can accept you. We love you, Father, and thank you for what you're going to do in this moment. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. I know you said Amen with me there. Well, what I want to do right now is jump right into our game time. Boy, I love a good game. You'll never get Brother Joe in Safe House without playing some sort of game or something's wrong. He must have got COVID if he's not playing a game. But listen, we're going to jump into that game. So play attention, enjoy this with your family, and we'll see you right afterwards. You are about to play Bible Escape Room. You're going to start in a giant mansion, and you must get out of the front door before time runs out. But... To do that, you're going to have to unlock several doors. Each door needs the correct answer to a Bible riddle for it to unlock. Are you ready? Let's go! You've got 20 seconds to answer this first riddle. I disobeyed God's one wish and ended up in the belly of a fish. Who am I? I'm Jonah. Great job. You made it to the second door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I took down a giant, and everyone said I was brave. But now, my friends and I are hiding in a cave. Who am I? I'm David. Impressive! You made it past the first two riddles, but there's another locked door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I was famous for being strong, but that only lasted while my hair was long. Who am I? I'm Samson. Well done. You're making good progress, but we've got to keep going. Here's another locked door. You've got 20 seconds to escape. I prayed when the law said no one could pray, and God kept the hungry lions away. Who am I? Daniel. Wow, you're getting good at this. But can you get past this next door? You've got 20 seconds to escape. I risked my life to ask the king a question. And then I told the king about Haman's deception. Who am I? I'm Esther. Great work. These are getting harder. Can you figure out this next riddle? You've got 20 seconds. I was spending the night chained up in jail when an angel broke me out without even posting bail.
I'm Peter. You're so close. There are only two doors left. Here's the next riddle. You've got 20 seconds. When my son was born, I had to lay him in the hay. Now we celebrate his birthday on Christmas Day. Who am I? I'm Mary. This is it. You've made it to the last door. You're so close. You've got 20 seconds to answer this last riddle and break out. In my father's house, there are many rooms. You can have one because I broke out of the tomb. Who am I? I'm Jesus. Great job! You broke out! You really know your Bible characters. Way to go! All right, well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that game. Now we're going to jump straight into our song. Now, this is a song that you have not heard before, the one that you guys have been singing with the young girl that does all the motions. I found another one by that same group, so I want you to take the time and enjoy this song. It's called Finish the Race. Pay attention to the words. surrounded by those who've gone before let us throw away everything that hinders as we go since we are surrounded by those who've gone before Let us throw away all the sin that tangles up our souls. Fix our eyes, oh, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author of our faith. And let us run, oh, let us run with perseverance. Oh, Lord, let us finish the race. 
Well, I hope you had a good time escaping in your escape room and answered all those questions. Pay attention to that very first question because it has a little something to do with our lesson today. But let's jump straight now into our memory verse. Now, our memory verse today is a big one. And boy, I tell you what, you want to really impress me. I want to see you memorize this and post it on Facebook because that would just blow my mind. I'm even having a hard time remembering this one. So if you have your Bibles, you can take those out and you'll turn to the, the book that I'm going to tell you here in just a second, or you can pay attention to the screen. We're going to do full screen because that's how big these verses are today. There's two of them. So let's get into our word right now. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him enduring the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand throne of God. Boy, it's such a, a wonderful thing when we read the scripture and we see the love of God in every single verse. But it talked about running that race and finishing that race, sort of like the song that you just enjoyed with those motions, that new one. We're going to sing that again. But we have to, God calls us to run a race, to do certain things. And when he calls us to do them, he, want us, he wants us to finish it. He wants us to complete it. And he says he'll give us everything that we need to complete it. God says in his word that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it to the end. And that's what you and I need to do. So we're going to study something today in our lesson, a man that needed to complete his race, but he didn't really want to. And his name is Jonah. Jonah is a book in the Bible that has four chapters, and we're going to talk about every single chapter. Like, Brother Joe, how are you going to do that in our, our short segment of Safe House? You'll be surprised. But I want you to join me now as we get ready to turn in our Bibles to Jonah and think about what was it really like? to be like Jonah in that moment. Let's find out together. Oh, what, what is this place? Who is that? Where, where am I? Oh, oh, this must have been where Jonah was at. And it, it smells like, it smells like camels. Do you see a camel? Oh, well anyway, Jonah, right? Jonah was a prophet. He was a prophet, it was a man called by God and inspired by God, who God talked to him to give him certain things to tell people all over the world. And Jonah one day was called to go to Nineveh. That's kind of a hard word, but that's a city, a city full of nasty, mean, and probably a little ugly people, just because they just didn't like anything. They didn't love probably their own mothers. They were known for being really harsh. And Jonah really didn't want to do what God told him to do. Now, he probably did everything else, but he was like, this one thing, I just don't want to go there. So you know what he did? Probably the same thing that you and I have done sometimes to our parents. We decided to do what we wanted to do, and that's not such a good idea. But Jonah was called by God to run a race, to go a certain path, and he decided to go his own way. So this is what Jonah decided to do. Now, where he was at in his time, he decided to run away to a different direction. Now that time they didn't have cars, they had camels, wherever that stinky one's at, and donkeys, but they didn't get very far very fast, but he had to get somewhere and get somewhere quick. So he decided to get in a boat. So he went down to the port of Joppa to get into a boat to go to Tarshish, which is the farthest side away from where God called him to be. Now, I've always kind of wondered what happened there too. And that comes in, jo in Jonah chapter two. So chapter one, Jonah's called by God to run a race that he decides not to go to. And he gets down into that boat. And he gets into that boat and something happens. And towards the end of chapter one, something really happens that I think you might actually know. All right, so before we get too far ahead of ourselves with this story in Jonah, I think we should see what it must have been like on the boat when Jonah went down to Joppa to get in that boat to go to Tarshish, the opposite direction of God's call. So I want you to come along with me and let's go see what it was like on that boat. Let's kind of jump there together. Biggest jump you've got, stand to your feet. You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, now we're on the boat. All right, you with me? So I brought my little tube to keep me safe because there's lots of water around here and I don't want to drown. 
Plus, I'm ready to go swimming in all my swim gear. So what happened to Jonah? So he goes down to Joppa, gets on this boat. He gets to these men, and they get going to Tarshish. Now, what happens when they get there? Well, the Bible says, in the end of, towards the end of chapter 1, that no, Jonah goes down to the bottom of the boat, and he starts falling asleep. And then God created a great wind and started tossing the boat back and forth and back and forth. And all the men on the top were scared, and they had no idea what was going on. It says that the captain of that boat told all the men to pray to their God that something could stop this situation. And then he went down and saw Jonah sleeping. And he tells him, wake up. He says, you should be praying and helping us to figure out how we can calm this storm. Something's not right. And so Jonah goes up to the top of the boat and he's standing there. Now, he didn't have a raft like this. It was just the men themselves in their clothes. And the men try to figure out whose fault is it that this is happening. And they eventually find it's Jonah's fault. And Jonah tells them that he serves the one and living God, the one that created the sea and everything. And they say, well, what should we do? Because these men, you know, they needed to get rid of them, but they didn't want to get in trouble for killing them or throwing them off the boat. And so Jonah says, that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to get rid of me. You know, it's sort of like sin in our life. When we have sin and there's something bad going on, unless we take care of that, it's not going to get any better. And Jesus wants us to always go to him and ask for forgiveness of the things that we do. But Jonah wasn't ready to do that for himself, but he was going to help somebody else. So he says, you're going to have to throw me over if you want this storm to stop. They even tried to steer that boat a little longer after that, hoping that they didn't have to throw him over, but they still ended up doing it. I don't know about you, but there's no one around here to throw me off this boat. And you know what happens after they throw him off the boat? I think that we should go to that next scene and find out, don't you? Man, it looks kind of cold in the water. All right, let's just jump into our next scene. You ready to jump with me? Let's get close to the edge here. All right, on the count of three, we're going to jump. Ready? Stand up with me. One, two, three. <gasps> oh, man. This is, oh, this is wet. Now I kind of know what Jonah must have felt like when he was tossed over the side. And, oh, this is cold water. You know, you know at the end of chapter one in Jonah, it talks about a, a fish. Do you remember hearing about a great fish? Some people call it a whale, but I, you, you, you don't see any whales around here, do you? I don't, I don't know if I want to do this story anymore. Do you, what was that? Well, I, I think something's coming. Whoa, 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 oh, oh! It's nasty and gross in here. I can't see anything. 